I've got a real problem. My website is growing too quickly and I need to begin scaling my servers dynamically to accommodate my users. I'm not talking about web servers though. That stuff is easy. You can find another video on that. I'm talking about my background process servers. Here's my current setup. I run Apache Airflow on one big box. So I just got one of the most expensive boxes I could afford to basically handle the largest load I could imagine. So this has two problems. One is that as my website keeps growing, the largest load I can imagine is going to keep getting higher and higher, and I can only keep scaling this box for so long. And two, the bigger problem right now is that I'm paying 180 bucks a month for this, but you can see I'm not using all of it. My memory is only about 33%, CPU is about a third, so I'm paying for this huge capacity, but I'm only using a little bit of it. So I'm wasting about two-thirds of my spend. But, you know, what am I going to do? I can't just shrink down the server and then manually spin it back up when my site gets busy and back down. This is difficult because, like I said, it's not a web server where you can just shut them down and bring them back up because the time for a request is only maybe 30 seconds. These background processes can run days, so it makes ETL life a little more complicated, especially in Airflow. Now, as a DigitalOcean customer, this caught my eye recently. They offer a managed Kubernetes service. So I don't really know Kubernetes. I don't know how to set up a basic cluster, but they're willing to do it for me and it's not very expensive. This would allow me to dynamically manage a multi-node cluster so I could scale it up and down as my workload increases and decreases so I'm not spending all this money on one huge server. So I started playing around with this product about six days ago to test it out. It's actually really easy to get going. You just do this create button here and go down to clusters and you can put in your information. So I just put in the cheapest droplet to start with, NYC3, and you can just set this up here. So here's the current cluster that I have set up. Right now I'm at about two nodes, I think. I have auto scaling set up, yep. So I have two nodes running, and the way you deploy your software to this is you build a Docker image and you push it up to a Docker repository. I use Docker Hub, they give you one private uh, Docker repository for free. So I use that, and then you just tell DigitalOcean's uh, Kubernetes cluster to pull your Docker image from there. It's actually really, really simple. They have a lot of walkthroughs and tutorials, getting started, and uh, I use the kubectl official Kubernetes client. I suggest you just download this config file. So there's a more advanced option I didn't look into. I just wanted to talk to one cluster. So the deal is you download this file to your local computer, and then when you run kubectl, you reference this file, which has a secure token that lets you talk to your cluster. Super easy, and then you can use all the kubectl commands. So here's a little hello world example. Uh, they recommend you go to uh, your Kubernetes folder, and you'll see here's my YAML file that I downloaded from this. It has a bunch of secure information I'm not gonna show you. And then to talk to your cluster, you just do kubectl, and this flag and tell it where the cube config is to read from. So this is here in my uh, .cube directory, in my home directory. And then you can just put your regular kubectl commands. So you can do help, and you can see all the things you can do. So I can do get nodes, and this should show me I have two nodes running as we saw. So there are the two nodes. And then you can do all sorts of things here. So the biggest thing you want to do to get this thing running is set up a deployment in my case. You can look up Kubernetes documentation for how to do other things. But in my case, I just wanted to set up a deployment to run my Airflow workers. So this here is a standard Kubernetes deployment template. Uh, it's a YAML file. Uh, you can edit it here. And then once you're happy with it, you just use kubectl command line and apply it to your cluster. And it will go on the control plane. We'll figure out what it needs to do to get your cluster so it can run this deployment. So this is pretty simple. I started out with having one worker, so I maintain a Docker image that has all the airflow stuff that I need, and all I do is once I'm in the image, my run command is to call airflow, and then worker, and I give it a concurrency of five right now. So if you know a little bit about airflow, basically it's split into three components, a scheduler, a web server, and this is concerned with the worker, because the workers do the hard part, and that's what I really need to scale. The more users that come to my website, the more workers I basically need running at once. And that's what I'm doing with that one big box. I have it set to like run 50 concurrent workers at a time just in case I need them. But with this, I can now specify a little smaller workers and I can add more as I need. So I'm lowering my concurrency to five. And then let's say if I get really busy, I can have 10 of them. And if I'm not as busy, I only need one of them. The other thing to consider is this resources block where I'm specifying a memory size of one gigabyte which means that Kubernetes consists of a few nodes, and based on how much available memory there is, it will only assign 
my Airflow worker with concurrency 5 to a node with at least one gigabyte of memory. So I found in my tuning I'm using node sizes with four gigabytes of memory because there's also some Kubernetes internals that takes up, I would say, almost a gigabyte of memory. So that only leaves me about three gigabytes of wiggle room per node. So this can say that, like, let's say I've got three gigabytes free. This says, oh, I can fit three of these Airflow workers uh, on one node. So just one, two, three, and then they're happy there. Assuming, though, they don't go too much over the one gigabyte. So I have it here where my workers can exceed the one gigabyte. You can also change it so if they exceed a memory quota, you just kill them. So it could be possible I start with one worker and it just starts taking up more memory, but then Kubernetes will not assign any more of these other uh, Airflow workers on that machine if there's not enough free memory, which is awesome. And the last thing that I like to point out here when working with Airflow is to be considerate of this termination grace period seconds. So by default, when you want to do a deployment or stop a pod, Kubernetes will give uh, your pod a grace period. It'll give it a uh, soft kill signal and it'll wait for it to shut down. So typically, I forget the default, I think it's like 30 seconds. So that's usually what a web server needs. When you run a web server, it's handling requests very ephemerally. It should be stateless. So you can shut down a web server quickly and then bring a new one back up. No one's gonna uh, lose any information or have a problem. But with Airflow, as you know, a lot of these jobs can take a long time because of running in the background. So I can't just wait 30 seconds and then if my job isn't done, say, oh, screw it and pull the plug and then I'll, I'll lose data. That's not cool. So what I do here is I set the termination grace period to one year, meaning that if something takes longer than one year to run an Airflow, I've got a major problem. Realistically, though, this just means that to have faith that once Kubernetes issues a soft kill signal that the Airflow worker is just going to naturally die down, which is what it does. So Airflow works is once you want to deploy new code typically, you'll issue all your current workers a soft kill signal, and then that will tell them to finish up all the work that they're doing, don't accept any new work, and then once they're done, basically just terminate the process. And this has worked really, really well. In the past uh, setups I've done, uh, I've done a whole bunch of little uh, janky setups and hacks to make this work, but this actually works really well. So here's Airflow in action. You saw I had two nodes running. There's not a whole lot going on here. You can see I only have actually one active worker at the moment. And you can go back in DigitalOcean and take a peek at what's going on. So let's check out the node list again. So remember last time there were two nodes running in my cluster, and oh, now there's only one node going on. What happened? Did it crash? No, 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 no. So this is another great feature of the DigitalOcean managed Kubernetes is they have this managed auto scaling feature, which if you go here, you can click and resize and auto scale, and you can give it a minimum and maximum number of nodes to have. So now this doesn't automatically add them. You need to enable this horizontal pod auto scaling, which I'll get into. So this is part one of two things you need to do to get DigitalOcean to scale up and down. So you enable this and basically the way it works is when Kubernetes is unable to schedule a new pod because it's out of resources, DigitalOcean will go and add a new node to the cluster, and then the Kubernetes uh, control plane will be able to then assign that new pod to the new resource. And then it's able to sense, I'm not exactly sure how, when the inverse happens, when there's enough free resources, it doesn't need the extra hardware, DigitalOcean will remove that node from my Kubernetes cluster. The reason this happened was because if I go back here and look at my time, it just turned past midnight UTC, and that's when I kick off a lot of my daily workers. So a lot of them just finished up, like I have some daily jobs that run, like proxy rotator. So when they started up, when you saw earlier in this video, they were running, and then Kubernetes assigned them an extra uh, node here because it sensed that there was uh, too much work going on. It said, okay, there's a lot going on, I'm gonna assign an additional node. And once that work finished, naturally, the memory pressure relieved itself and Kubernetes took away another node. DigitalOcean also gives you the standard Kubernetes dashboard so you can take a glance at the overall health of your cluster. So right now it's running with one node because like I saw, it's not that busy, only one thing is running right now. And if we look here, we can go down and check out our ETL workers deployment and we can see how many pods are in use. So right now there are two pods out of two. Now, if you have an astute eye and you remember my deployment file, You'll remember that in my deployment, I specified replicas equal to one, meaning to tell Kubernetes to only run one instance of ETL worker at a time. So why is Kubernetes running two? This is because of the second feature you have to enable if you want auto scaling to work that I enabled here called horizontal pod auto scaling. You can just put it in the same YAML file you use to configure your cluster. So it's down here. I'll put a link to it below. It's sort of like a V2 beta feature 
Um, so it's been working so far so well in my staging environment, but all you have to do here is you pick a name for this and you give it a scale target rep. So this tells it what to scale uh, up or down based on the resources. So I'm telling it to go to my deployment called ECL workers, which I'm referring here. So it's gonna modify the number of replicas based on these metrics here. So I'm just telling it to go by memory, and if the average utilization of memory, uh, I wanna say it's per node, exceeds 70%, then it's gonna trigger it to go to the target ref and say, uh-oh, we're running tight on memory, trigger more ETL workers, which are airflow workers, that way we'll distribute the load even more. Let me show you what I mean. So right now I have ETL workers set to running a replication of two, so there are two pods running, two instances of, of my airflow worker, meaning I have a total of 10 workers running right now. Now here I'm on my staging web app and I'm gonna trigger a bunch of workflows. That's the thing that scales with the number of users. So if I get a bunch of users and they trigger a bunch of these workflows, I want Kubernetes to start adding more hardware so it can handle the load. And then once those jobs are done, to retract the hardware so I don't spend too much. So I'm gonna trigger five of them right now. Okay, you can see here that I have five workflows running on stage. And now on my workflow runner in Airflow, this is the DAG that runs every minute and it looks for new work, picks it off the queue. It's gonna start getting busy and occupying more workers. So now it just turned light green, it's reading off the database queue and getting the first of my five workflows. And now I can see Airflow has queued up the second one. This is using the Airflow queue and it's gonna begin running right about now. And now I'm running the second out of my five workflows. And now I'm gonna monitor the Kubernetes dashboard. So as these workflows are being added to the system in real time, they're gonna start eating up more and more memory and resources. You can also go in DigitalOcean and click on Insights and you can check out the memory. So you can see here, it's starting to spike up a little bit. And this Kubernetes dashboard updates in real time. I think they're using Ajax behind the scenes. So you can just kind of like sit back and look at it or have it up as a dashboard. It'll automatically refresh without you having to click anything. So now you can see it changed to two out of three and something's going on. This turned red insufficient memory. I wonder why, because remember, we only had one node running. So it makes sense. That node only had four gigabytes. It was running two that each had at least one gigabyte reserved, plus Kubernetes, plus other things that may be taking up memory. So let's go back to DigitalOcean. And once that little red thing happens, it triggers DigitalOcean to go say, uh-oh, we're out of room. We better spin up another server. So now you can see the little spinny thing is running. It's spinning up a second physical server to add to my Kubernetes cluster. We can go back to my workflow runner and verify that yes, now I have one, two, three, four, all five of them are now running. So basically Airflow's running, it's saying I'm, I'm low on resources, spin up more workers, which is why when you remember this used to say two out of two, then when we had more work, memory started getting tight and it changed to two out of three. The three was the horizontal pod auto scaling saying, oh no, memory's getting tight. Now I think we need to have a replication of three instead of two, meaning I wanna add more workers to distribute the load. And then the denominator was only a two because Kubernetes could only fulfill two out of the three requests from the HPA, horizontal pod auto scaling. So that triggered DigitalOcean to say, oh no, you're low on resources, let me get you another node. And you can see here the horizontal pod auto scaling actually pumped it up to four. I don't know why, it has a finicky algorithm that it uses, but in all my testing so far, it's been super reliable. So I'm really optimistic that this is gonna work on production. Which brings me to, how do we go from stage to production? So I don't have a good answer yet. I'm still doing some load testing. I'm basically just running a bunch of mock workflows on my staging environment to push this cluster and make sure that uh, nothing can really crash here or go too wrong. So what I'll probably do is over the weekend on Saturday night when the site is not as busy, I will then uh, create a new separate production Kubernetes cluster and deploy this there and then make the switch over. I'll turn everything on the old production off, everything on the new production on and kind of just monitor everything for uh, probably Sunday and hope nothing goes wrong. We'll see what happens. So if you're a customer and something is a little hiccupy, uh, I'm sorry, I'll be right with it. but. This is um, a needed growing pain because I can't keep running all these workflows on one big server. It's not sustainable. Uh, it's costing a lot more. This is gonna allow the website to grow and scale as users come and the site gets busy. Kubernetes will just start adding more servers. It'll run workflows for people that run in the background. Like I said, they could take hours or days. And then when they finish, it'll cool down and the cluster will go back down to a reasonable size and it won't pay as much. So lower costs for me mean lower costs for my consumers as well. That's it, leave your questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them about my experience with Kubernetes, if I missed anything, 
uh, your questions on Airflow. I happen to know a lot about that technology, and I'll be happy to help you out on getting your deployment running in the cloud. Take care and stay data-driven.